So let's find the domain and range of this particular function and then graph it. Domain means what are you allowed to plug in for x? Well, I'm, I'm allowed to plug in anything that makes as long as this whole thing here is positive. So that thing has to stay positive. And also, the denominator can't be 0. So let's start with that. x squared minus 49 cannot equal 0. Well, that's x plus 7 times x minus 7. That's how that factors. Can't equal 0, which means x cannot equal positive 7 or negative 7. So that's, that's the first part of the domain restriction. But there's more of a domain restriction because that entire thing on the inside has to be positive. So what we learn to do here is we graph this, we graph that whole thing, not considering the square root, so take off the square root sign and consider what that graph looks like and then determine when is that positive and when is it negative. So if you remember this, this is a rational function. I'm going to have x-intercepts, I'm sorry, not x, yeah, x-intercepts are actually ver vertical asymptotes when the denominator equals 0. So at negative 7 and at positive 7, I'm going to have vertical asymptotes. Remember that from rational functions? And so if something's happening over here, what's happening in on the left over here what's happening, in here what's happening, and over here. Those are the things I need to answer. What's happening in those three different sections of my graph. This right here, if I negative 4, which gives me my um, my y, uh, if, if I, I'm sorry, that's another 0, is that negative 4. That's, uh, that's a 0 at negative 4. So at negative 4, there's something else. That's another critical point. Making the numerator equal to 0 and solving that gives me another critical point. So I know that right there it's going to be crossing the x-axis, right? And my question is, where is this whole thing positive? Because that's what I'm allowed to plug in to that because I'm taking the square root and even root of that rational function. So that's where the x-intercept is. What's happening in this, so, so my question really should be what's happening in this region between negative 7 and negative 4, what's happening in there? So just plug in a value. Do a little t-chart here. I'll do a sideways t-chart. So let's take negative 5. When I plug negative 5 in here for x, and you can use your calculator with the store button. That's a really good way to do it. If they don't let you use your calculator, you just have to sort of do it in your head. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. Negative 5 squared is 25 minus 49 is a negative number. So I've got a negative over a negative, which is a positive. So that's positive in there. All the values in here are going to be positive, so it's probably going to do something like this, where it approaches that asymptote. So over here, what's going to happen? It's got This over here has got to go negative. This is probably doing something, I don't, we don't know, I don't know exactly what it's doing over here, but it's probably doing something like a cubic, where it's turning and it's going and approaching this vertical asymptote over there. So now my question is what's happening to the left of negative 7? Again, plug in another value. So I'm going to take instead of negative 5, let's plug in, I'll color code this as well, let's plug in negative 8. What happens when I plug in negative 8? Up on the top it's going to be negative 4, and on the bottom, what's negative 8 squared? Positive 64. 64. 64 minus 49 is a positive number. What's a negative divided by a positive? It's a negative. So what's the value down here? It's prob or the, What's it doing down here? It's probably doing something like that. Got it? Mm -hmm. Why can't it? Why do I know it's not going to cross that ac that up there, the, uh, the x-axis? How do I know it's not going to cross the x-axis? Because if it did, I would have more x-intercepts if it crossed the x-axis. Also, if you remember, if the um, the denominator, if the 
uh, remember from rational functions, if the degree of the denominator is bigger than the degree of the numerator, then when the degree of the denominator is bigger than the degree of the numerator, you have a horizontal asymptote of zero. So I know it's going to be doing that as it gets closer to zero, and I know it's not going to cross this vertical asymptote right here, so that's, some, that's similar. That's something roughly what the graphs. They want us just to sketch the graph, not to actually find it exactly. So that's this kind of the rough sketch of this graph. If I take the square root of all those things, the only thing that's going to change is those values are going to become a little bit smaller, but they're still going to be negative values. I'm sorry, are you allowed to take the square root of negative values? No. So this to the left of negative 7 is not part of the domain of this function right here, of this one right up here. That's why we're doing this sign analysis without the square root symbol. So now let's look over to the right. What happens over here? Let's do that same thing. Let's plug in values to the right. So let's plug in positive 8. Let me do a little color change. I'll go green. What if I plug in positive 8 up here? I'm going to get 8 plus 4, which is positive 12. And 8 squared is 64 minus 49 is a positive number. It doesn't really matter what the number is. I'm just looking for the sign. What's a positive divided by a positive? It's a positive. So what's the graph going to look like over here? It's going to be above the x-axis, and it's going to be something similar to that. So here's the question. What's the domain of this graph right here, of this function? Well, this over here is not part of the domain because I can't plug a negative number into a square root. This right here, from, from 4 down, that right there is not part of the domain. So what is the domain of this function? Let me clean this up here so you can see it better. The domain of the function is from negative 7, not including negative 7, because that's a vertical asymptote, to negative 4, including negative 4, because if I plugged in negative 4 here, I would just get 0, and that's okay to get 0. Oh, hold on one second. No, let's check this. What's negative 4 squared? Oh, oh yeah, it doesn't matter, because it's gonna, the bottom would be a negative, but 0 divided by a negative is still 0. So yes, negative 4 is part of it. Union, now this isn't part of it. So from, from here to here is not part of it, so all the way over here to 7, not including 7, so open bracket 7, to infinity. That's your domain. Now what's your range? I'll do this in orange. What's your range going to be? Well, look at the graph. The range, think about your vertical line. I'm sorry, horizontal line scans. Am I going to hit the graph if I draw horizontal lines? Is there, is there any values where y, is y ever going to be negative? No, it's never going to be negative. Is y ever going to be zero? It is going to be zero right there. It's going to be zero. Is y ever going to be, are there any positive numbers that y isn't going to be? No, there's not because it's going to touch these, these scanning lines that I'm putting here. You're, you're always going to touch some point here because these asymptotes, it, it, it approaches. Remember what the square root symbol did to this rational function? All it did is take those values and make them smaller. The shape is roughly the same, just the values are smaller. So the sketch of my graph, let me really clean this up now. The sketch of my graph would simply be, let's see if I can make it, I'll make it a thicker line so you can see it better. This, this is my graph. From there, up like this, this red one is, my, is the actual graph of my f of x, the square root of that mass. I know it's really getting messy. And right here, that's what, that's what my actual graph looks like. So if I were to clean this up, I could erase all of this stuff over here. Mm -hmm. And my graph is just going to look like, like this. There's my x-axis which is an asymptote, which is a horizontal asymptote over here. That's a horizontal asymptote. This right here is a, is a vertical asymptote at positive 7. This right here is a vertical asymptote at negative 7. And this point right here is 4, negative 4. And so there's your 
there's your y axis right there. That's the, that's the graph that they wanted me to sketch. That's the graph. So that was kind of a long-winded explanation for it. It's, it's complicated, but that's how you do those problems, is you, you pull out what's inside, and you graphically analyze that, and then the square root all that's doing is compressing those values down. But you're not allowed to put anything negative inside a square root, so that's why you eliminate all of those things. So here's your domain. Your range is going to be from 0, including 0, See that point right there? To positive infinity. That's what your range is going to be because every value will be touched eventually. It doesn't matter that it touches it twice. That doesn't ruin anything because it's still a function. The vertical lines can't touch it the same place twice. But the horizontal lines can touch, uh, can touch the graph in two places. 